Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at interval of convergence and radius of convergence. And so let's get some definitions out of the way. Um, we're going to talk about power series, and that's what we're going to do our convergence tests on. We have been looking at series of constants to figure out whether or not they converge or diverge. And so a series of constants means each term is, is a number, it's a constant. We're adding them together, and we're going to check and see if they add to infinity or, or if it converges to some horizontal asymptote. An infinite series that has powers of x minus a or x minus c or powers of x in it, we're going to call this a power series. And the center, you can always tell by setting this equal to zero, the center is right there. That's the five. That is your center. There we go. So uh, we're going to call this a power series because each term has a power of five in it. And we're going to define this power series centered at c. And we've got these some coefficients as well. There's our definition of our power series. It's an infinite series with powers of x in it. And we can take a look at a power series and we can actually call it a function of x. f of x equals this. So like f of 5 would equal all of this with a 5 replaced for your x. Or f of 7, you just put a 7 here. Or f of 10, you put a 10 here. What we're going to do today is we're going to figure out what numbers for a specific power series, what numbers can we actually put in for the x. Does the series converge to f of x for all values, or is it is it just one value? Are there a, a, a multiple or an interval set? So that's what we're going to do. We're trying to find the domain of the function. How good is the series? What can we use it for? For a power series, and let's see, there's only three possibilities. The series only converges at c, so it's only useful if you're actually plugging in this number c. Or there's some radius, some real number, so that the series converges inside that radius but diverges outside that radius. That's going to be like an interval. And then the other possibility is that the series converges for all real numbers. It doesn't matter what x you plug in, the series is going to converge to f of x. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use the ratio test to check this. Remember the ratio test will converge if our next term divided by a previous term is less than 1. And it diverges if it's greater than 1. So let me show you how this looks. So we've got a power series here, and we want to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. And we also have to check the endpoints to see whether or not they work. So step one, we're going to do the ratio test on this series. So I'm going to do the limit as it approaches infinity of the absolute value of the next term to the previous term. Now the absolute value allows me to ignore the negative one to the n plus one for now. So I'm just going to write that as x minus five to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, put that in parentheses, times 2 to the n plus 1. There is my a sub n plus 1 term. And then dividing by the original is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be times n times 2 to the n over x minus 5 to the n. And I need this to be less than 1 in order to converge. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to simplify this a little bit. So let's see if we can do some algebra. Limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 5 to the n plus 1 means x minus 5 to the n times x minus 5 to the first. I'm going to do the same thing with this 2 down here. Now I've got an n plus 1, 2 to the n times 2 to the first. This is going to allow me to simplify this. We want simpler. Simple is good. So what can cancel here? Now that we have this written like this, x minus 5 to the n's can cancel. Our 2 to the n's can cancel. And that's all that cancels. So let's see what we have left over. I've got the limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 5 times n. I'm going to put the n, I'll just put it at the end here. x minus 5 times n over n plus 1 times 2. So I'll put 2 times n plus 1. Now this limit is only looking at our n's. Forget the x's for now. As n approaches infinity, I've got an n to the first over n to the first. And so since those match, we look at the ratio of the coefficients, and so that all goes to 1. And what I have left over is the absolute value of x minus 5 over 2 and I need this to be less than 1 to show convergence. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I'm going to get that absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 2. And when you have it in that form right there, this number right here is your radius of 
convergence. So you know the radius is going to be 2. So now what we're going to do is write this absolute value inequality as negative 2 is less than x minus 5 is less than 2. And we're going to add 5 to everything, so I will get that 3 is less than x is less than 7. And you can see our center, our center up here was 5, our radius was 2, so we went left 2 from 5 is 3 and right 2 from 5 is 7. Now what we're going to do now is we have to check our endpoints. We're actually going to see if I can put an or equal to underneath the inequality for the 3 or for the 7. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check x equals 3. That's our, one of our endpoints. And so you're going to plug 3 in for your x. Again, we're trying to find values of x that make this a convergent series. Now, it's not absolute value, so you cannot ignore the negative 1 to the n plus 1. So if I replace x with 3, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And then I'm going to separate this, negative 1 to the n plus 1, from 1 to infinity. I'm going to separate this into negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n. Negative 2 to the n is the same thing as negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n. All over n times 2 to the n. And let's simplify it one more time, one more step I mean. The 2 to the n's are going to cancel. And when you have like bases, what do you do to those exponents? Well, you know that you add them up. So n plus 1 plus n gives me 2n plus 1. So let's see what kind of series I have here. Is it alternating? I do have a negative 1 to a power, but let's plug some numbers in and see what's going on. If I plug in a 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative. Then if I plug in a 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 1 to the fifth is still negative. And then if I plug in a 3, I'm going to get a negative and a negative. And this is not alternating. This is not alternating. This is 1 over 1, or negative 1 minus a half minus a third minus a fourth. This is our harmonic series in reverse. You can think of this as basically as a P series. This is 1 over n to the first. And we know that if 1 over n to the first, that diverges. So we cannot include the 3. I'm not going to include the 3. So what about checking x equals 7? So I'm going to get the series from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1. If you replace the x with 7, you 7 minus 5 is just 2 to the n over n, 2 to the n. This is going to be easier to simplify because right off the bat my 2 to the n's cancel and I am looking at the series from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And we have looked at this series a lot. It's 1 over 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. This is our convergent alternating harmonic series. It converges by the alternating series test. The terms are decreasing in magnitude, the limit as n approaches infinity is zero, and they're alternating. So that converges, which means I can include the seven. The seven creates a convergent series. So my answer for my interval of convergence is three is less, or sorry, in between three and seven. Three is less than x is less than seven, but I can include the seven, I cannot include the three. My radius of convergence, I already found up here, was r equals 2. And that should make sense. Our center was originally 5. How far left from 5 did we go? We went 2 to the left and 2 to the right. All right, so let's take a look at another example here. I'm going to set up the ratio test first of all. So I'm going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x to the 2. Replace the n with n plus 1 and do the same thing in the bottom. lots of parentheses there, and then times the original flipped over. And again, we're doing absolute value, so I'm not going to include the negative 1 to the n. So let's see what happens. Uh, I need to distribute that up there. That's going to be x to the 2n plus 2 plus 1, or 2n plus 3. And then at the bottom, I'm going to have 2n plus 2 plus 1. I've got 2n plus 3 at the bottom as well. And again, I'm going to be taking the limit as n approaches infinity of all of this.
All right, so let's simplify this. Now, the x to the 2n plus 3 is going to be the same thing as x to the 2n times x cubed. x to the 2n times x cubed. And then the bottom, I'm going to start writing out the factorial. This is the larger factorial until I get to 2n plus 1. So I'm going to have 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. Finally, times 2n plus 1 factorial. And then I still have the other fraction sitting there waiting on me to do something with it. That's an exclamation point, by the way. All right, so let's see what happens. Oh, I needed to write this as x to the 2n times x to the first. Do times x to the first. Sorry about that. That's sloppy. Let's rewrite it. x to the 2n and then times x to the first. All right, so let's simplify it. The x to the 2n's are going to cancel. The 2n plus 1 factorial cancels in the top and bottom. And so I have x cubed over x, which is equal to x squared. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity of x squared on top, and all of my n's are left on bottom. 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2. And again, we are only taking the limit as n approaches infinity. We're not worried the x is we're not worried about the x at all. This is as n approaches infinity. As n approaches infinity, I'm going to have like a 4n squared on bottom, and I don't have any n's up here at all. So this is bottom heavy. So this means this limit equals 0, which means that my radius of convergence is r equals infinity, which means I can use any number I want for this series. This series is so well behaved that I can plug in any x value I want here and it will be a convergent series. You can plug in a 50, a 100, a whatever you want, and it, was, it is going to converge. So my IOC, my interval of convergence, is negative infinity to infinity, and my radius of convergence is infinity. All right, one last example. Set up our ratio test. The limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of n plus 1 factorial times x minus 3 to the n plus 1. That's a weird 3. And then divided by n factorial times x minus 3 to the n. All right. This is going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of. The n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. I'm going to go ahead and write that. And just imagine that I cancel those n factorials. And then I'm also going to be left with a x minus 3 just to the first power, because the x minus 3 to the n's are going to cancel. So just imagine we did that as well. All right, so as n goes to infinity, wait a minute, I don't have any n's on the bottom at all. This is now top heavy, so this goes to infinity no matter what x is. So that infinity is not less than 1. Infinity is greater than 1. So this diverges for everything outside of the center. So this is the instance where our radius of convergence is r equals zero. We don't have one. We can't go to the right or to the left. There's, in our interval of convergence, is there's really not an interval. This only converges at its center. This only converges when x is three. All right, so this is the ratio test, and we're gonna be practicing this a lot, and so I will see you guys tomorrow.